Hello and welcome to the first of our videos about multiple linear regression. And this follows straight on from the module on simple linear regression and you can follow it through as module 2 on the website. Um, what we're going to go through here is model 2 of module 2 <laughs> which is um, can be found on page 2.6. Um, basically what rather than having just a single continuous predictor variable which we were looking at in simple linear regression we're going to use two predictor variables to predict our outcome um, and in this case neither of them will be continuous one is an ordinal variable which is social economic class now an ordinal variable means that the it's broken up into categories but each cate the categories can be placed into order in this case the the lowest numerical category represents the most affluent social economic class so that will be our first predictive variable. The second one will be gender. Um, this is a dichotomous nominal predictive variable. By dichotomous we mean simply that you can either be in one of two categories. You can either be uh, male or female in this case. But there are other dichotomous variables too where, where you'll be given, for example, in a survey a question with a yes-no answer. That, that would also be a dichotomous variable. Okay, so let's run the analysis. Go up to Analyze, down to Regression, and along to linear. Now we've seen this pop-up box before, it's exactly the same as it was for simple linear regression. Actually we're going to be using the same outcome variable as well which is KS3 stand as it's known on, on this list on the left here. It goes into the dependent box which is the where the outcome variable goes. Now KS3 stand is just a continuous variable which is the age 14 exam scores of the students. Um, again, this is the outcome variable that, that we've used before, so we should be familiar with that by now. Um, let's find the social economic class variable. It's labelled SEC on our variable list on the left here. If we click on that and move that into the independence box, the independence box is where we put all our predictor variables. Um, these icons next to the variables tell us whether they're nominal, ordinal or continuous. Uh, this symbol represents a nominal variable, this bar chart here is an ordinal variable, and this ruler here is a continuous variable. So the other variable we're looking for is gender. These are all placed alphab alphabetically even. So we'll move gender across into the predictor box as well. So f for now we've got the model that we want to construct. We won't actually, usually of course, we'd go through and we'd make sure that we were looking at all the assumptions, um, we'd make sure we'd plot the relevant graphs and things to check these assumptions. We'll be showing you how to do this in a, in a later video once we've built up a model a little bit more. For now we're just going to focus on the basics which is how to actually run the model and how to interpret the coefficients. So once you're happy with everything just click OK to run the analysis. OK let's have a go at interpreting the SPSS output from that um, analysis then. Um, the first of these tables isn't particularly interesting, it just tells us um, which predictor variables we've entered into the model. So you can see that gender and social class have been entered into the model to look at the outcome variable of age 14 standard marks, which is as expected. Um, the model summary is more interesting. What this actually does is um, tell us the total variance in our outcome variable, which is explained by our model, by our our predictor variable. So in this case um, with our outcome variables age 14 exam scores. Um, the R square statistic is 0.155 which can be turned into a percentage by just moving this decimal point back to spaces. So this means that 15.5 percent of the total variance in age 14 scores is explained by social economic class and gender, our two predictor variables. Um, obviously that means that there's a lot of the the variability in our in our outcome variable in these exam scores isn't explained but it's still a substantial amount it goes to show that to some extent the exam grade that, you, that the students will get is dictated by simply their gender and their social economic background um, so that's a that's a important uh, the model summary is an important table to look at first um, the ANOVA is, is a, basically a way of testing um, whether our model is actually any good at predicting the outcome. So as, as before we've created this linear model to use our two predictor variables to, to be able to accurately predict um, what age 14 score an individual will get. Um, there's going to be some error in that. What we want to make sure is that the error isn't any bigger than if we were just using um, the average uh, age 14 mark each time. So say at random you picked a single 
individual from from the population and wanted to guess their age 14 score if you just guess the average each time is that as good or worse than using our model to predict um, their, their score and um, so we're hoping that this will be statistically significant these two columns here um, because the f-test basically tests um, the error in our model the residuals in in the model we've just created against the residuals if uh, if we just use the average score each time and as we can see the um, statistical significance is less than 0 0.05 so we can be reasonably confident that our um, our model is a, is better at predicting the outcome than simply using the average okay finally let's interpret this coefficients table um, if you recall we coded gender such that uh, males were coded as 0 and females as 1 so this coefficient is actually the difference between being a male 0 and a female 1 um, we can see that the score of 1.198 means that um, females are predicted to score 1.198 more marks than males even when we take into account social class so yeah we can see that girls are doing are doing better than boys are predicted to do better than boys than the model if we go along to these two columns we can see whether the um predictive variable is you know statistically significant basically whether it's um whether it is actually definitely an important part of of predicting the outcome and as you can see these values for actually for both um predictive variables is less than 0 0.05 so they're both statistically significant predictors within the model social class is slightly more complicated um, the high, if you remember the highest social class was coded as 0 and the lowest social class coded as 8 um, so this means that for every category um, you go up numeric code which means going down in terms of affluence um, you lose 1.722 it marks in your age 14 exams so this means that um, every time you, you drop down the social class you get 1.7 less marks you're predicted to get 1.7 less marks and um, that's actually quite substantial when you consider the fact that um, you may for example the difference between being in the wealthiest social class and the least affluent social class is 1.722 times 8 so there's actually quite a substantial gap in, in social class um, in the way our model predicts the impact of social class. Um, finally you've got the constant here which is actually the intercept for the model so this is the age 14 score predicted if you score zero on both of the predictor variables. Now in this case that means a male from the wealthiest social class. So a male from the wealthiest social class will, is predicted to score seven points at age 